Hello everyone, I'm Chen Wenqi from Tsinghua University. Today it's my pleasure to present our paper about the measurement of viral redeployment. Let's start with the introduction of BGP. As we know, the internet is composed of thousands of smaller self-operative networks named autonomous systems, or aggregated as ASUs. And for the gateway protocol, also known as BGP, is the protocol that connects these ASUs. With BGP, an AS can announce its routes to other ASUs, and the ASUs that will receive the routes will select the best route according to certain policies and further propagate it to other ASUs. Finally, in the data frame, each AS will use the best route to forward traffic. However, a long standing problem of BGP is that the AS that will receive the route lacks the ability to verify its validity. This makes it possible for an AS to announce a bubble stream, which is known as the prefix hijacking path. For example, as illustrated in the figure, a malicious AS can announce that it owns a prefix that belongs to another AS. Then the AS is that you see the bubble route may choose it as the best route. As a result, the malicious AS hijacks the traffic from the victim AS to the prefix. Prefix hijacking attacks are easily triggered by misconfigurations or AS level adversaries, cause serious impact, and may undermine other internet infrastructures like blockchains and DNS servers. And these features make prefix hijacking accidents continuously arise in recent years. And as a result, addressing prefix hijacking becomes a great concern of researchers and network operators. One solution to eliminate or reduce the chance of prefix hijacking is RPKI, which provides BGP with the authentication mechanism to check the validity of the original AS in the root. The simplified working process of RPKI can be described as follows. First, the owner of a prefix P can register its prefix in RPKI repository, generating a record that authorizes an AS to originate prefix P. Then if other AS is receive routes containing prefix P. They can refer to the RPK repository to check the validity of the routes and drop the invalid ones accordingly. <clears throat> the first step to authorize an AS to originate a prefix is called root original authorization. And the second step to check the validity of the received routes is called root original validation. For example, in the following figure, we can say AS1 is using ROA to protect its prefix P and AS2 is using a ROV to drop in valid routes. <clears throat> With development of RPKI, many researches and projects are devoted to measuring the deployment of RPKI. However, the deployment of ROV still remains unclear. <clears throat> Unlike measuring the deployment of ROA, which has directly available data in the RPKI repository and is relatively easy to analyze, the measurement of ROV deployment is more difficult to perform. First, there is no public data to use because the validation process is configured on the routers and the configuration is usually private. Uh, we can only instead observe the propagation of invalid routes to see which AS paths are filtering invalid routes. <clears throat> Second, because we can only observe the filtering behavior of the paths, we need extra inference techniques to pinpoint the AS's that, that adopt, adopts ROV. Due to these two reasons, current measurement of ROV deployment is mainly limited in two aspects. First, in the data collection part, there are not enough observations to make a large scale measurement. Most work collect data on control plane voltage points, which means that they can only observe the propagation of invalid routes on the routers that make their routing table public which limits the number of vantage points and narrows down the measurement range. And the second is that the inference methods have problems in their accuracy and efficiency. And these two challenges makes the existing measurement either limited to a small range or have inaccurate, inaccurate results. In face of these two challenges, we propose our model ROVMI for large scale, accurate and efficient measurement of ROV deployment. Our, mo <clears throat> our model mainly contains two parts. First, in the measurement infrastructure, 
we connect the path that filter and don't filter the valid routes. And then in the inference algorithm, we pinpoint the ASs that adopt or we form the correct path. In to solve challenge one, we propose a data, data plane path collection scheme. We first utilize invalid prefix in the wild to increase the origin of invalid graphs. And then use data plane water points to make more observations. To solve challenge two, we combine probabilistic modeling and gradient-based methods for accurate and efficient inference. We first extend the probabilistic modeling method from parallel to ensure accuracy and confirm efficient and scalable solution by introducing gradient-based algorithm. First, I'm introducing the measurement infrastructure. The intuition of our measurement infrastructure can be described by follows. First, we find the invalid and valid prefix pair from the same origin as in the control plane. According to reports, the daily number of observed invalid prefixes in the internet is about 7,000 which can greatly amplify the number of observations. Then in this plane, we compare the trace routes to the <coughs> from the vantage point to the prefix pair, and the results can indicate the filtering behavior of different passes. <coughs> in the control plane, the first task is to spot an in the wild invalid prefix. We use BGP stream to get the live access of BGP messages in the internet and check each message against our A records to find the invalid prefixes. <clears throat> Note that not all the invalid prefixes can be used for a measurement, so we need to filter some of the prefixes before the data plane probing. For example, <clears throat> covered prefixes, which refer to the invalid prefixes that are covered by shorter but legitimate prefixes are not suitable for our measurement because they will still be reachable through a path, even, even if that path filters, filters the invalid routes because it's still allowable through the shorter but uh, uh, legitimate prefix. We use a prefix try to perform the filtering of covered, covered prefix. First, we start with an empty prefix try, and each time we, uh, we see a legitimate prefix, we insert it into the try and set the property of the end node of this prefix to one to represent this prefix has been seen. <clears throat> and when we see an invalid prefix, we can query the try to see whether the prefix is covered. A prefix is not covered only if all the properties of its ancestor nodes are zero. And finally, the covered prefixes will be filtered. <clears throat> And then we use similar data structure and measure to filter multi-homing prefixes and maintain uh, legitimate prefixes. Please refer to our paper for more information if you are interested. <clears throat> Finally, we retrieve live, live IP addresses from the prefix pair. In order to increase runtime performance, we do the scanning every day and record all the live IP addresses. And in the retrieving process, we directly refer to the records. Uh, then in the data plane, we launch trace route to the <clears throat> to the two live IP addresses from the one points. And as the table shows, there are two situations. The first thing is that the probe has identical as level path to the legitimate and invalid prefixes. This indicates that in the control plane, the path is not filtering the invalid route. Uh, otherwise, the invalid route wouldn't be able to propagate along this path. The second situation is that the probe has different AS level paths to the legitimate and invalid prefixes. In this situation, the path um, to the legitimate prefix is filtering invalid routes. Otherwise, the invalid route can also propagate through this path, and the probe uh, will also choose this path in the data plane as, uh, as, the, as, its, as its route to the uh, invalid pre prefix. <clears throat> Because this path, uh, this path is better than the path to the invalid prefix. Uh, through this scheme, we managed to label the paths that are filtering invalid routes and the paths that are not filtering invalid routes and with uh, the data plane voltage points. Then in the inference algorithm, our target is to find the ASs that adopt how we with observed data D. 
If we model the problem under binary settings, the results can be easily influenced by the inconsistent filtering on different paths or the noise in the network, uh, which is prone to get no solution and increase <coughs> and the inaccurate results. In light of this problem, we choose to model the problem on the probabilistic settings. For each ASI, we define a variable GI to represent the probability of ASI not adopting IO. Then GI is a random variable distributed in the interval between zero and one. Then it's easy to get the likelihood function for the observed data D. Under these settings, if we want to know the ROV deployment of ASI, we need to solve the marginal distribution of GI in its posterior, posterior distribution. So if we can solve the posterior distribution of the big Z, we know the deployment of ROV of all these CSCs. In this way, the problem is converted to an ambition inference problem. <clears> the <throat> hardware solution is non-trivial. When the problem is located in a high dimensional space and the dimensions are highly correlated, which makes it impossible to get analytic solutions. And sampling methods like MCMC, utilized in paraverbs, also become inefficient and unscalable. So we introduce another vision inference algorithm named the stain variation of gradient descent or SVGD to solve this problem. SVGD also uses particle-based method to approximate target distribution. However, unlike MCMC, it's a gradient-based method which provides a deterministic way to update the particles and is much more efficient. Then in the experiment, we perform a large scale measurement in the internet and compare our model with some baseline measures. Here are some representative marginal distributions. In the first two figures, the particles concentrate at zero and one, which show great evidence in undeploying and deploying our uh, In the third figure, the particles concentrate at a value between uh, zero and one which means that this AS shows different filtering behavior on different paths. And in the last figure, the particles are very dispersed, which means that we lack, we lack enough information to infer the early deployment of this AS. <clears throat> then for the convenience of analyzing, we use two metrics to summarize each marginal distribution. The first is the mean of the prob probability, which shows how likely each AS is to adopt a the second is the confidence, which can represent the concentration of the distribution and shows how confident we are about our judgment. After setting thresholds for the metrics, we divide the ASCs into four classes and the corresponding numbers are listed in the red table. As we can see, our measurements show that together with ROA, ROV is also showing a promising trend in its deployment. <clears throat> More analysis about the measurement results can be found in our paper. Finally, we compare our model with some baseline methods in terms of accuracy and efficiency. For accuracy, we validate the measurement results on a small set of ground truths collected by a project named HBGP CVS. The results show that both MCMC and SVGD achieve 100% precision and recall. We show that probabilistic, uh, probabilistic modeling is a good choice for our problem. Then for efficiency, we compare the execution time of SVGD and MCMC. And it can be seen that SVGD only made about 20% of the execution time of MCMC to reach convergence, which means that using SVGD for solution makes about five times improvement in efficiency. <clears throat> Finally, for future work, these problems can be considered. First, we can schedule the probes in the data frame to reduce unknown rate or generate less useless paths to reduce overhead. Also, continuous measurement and incorporating IPv6 are also worth considering in the future. Well, this is my talk. Thanks for listening.